Hey everybody, I'm Sarah, Lonesome Glory, and today I am going to open a bunch of briar packages that have been stacking up here at my house essentially since Briar Fest. So there's a lot to unbox and let's get started. I've kind of been taking inventory of what is sitting around me right now, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. Um, not all of them just contain one horse. I know I have, I think, two Premier Clubs here, a Vintage Club model, at least one Stable Mate Club model, and three boxes that have the Halloween stuff that Briar just released a couple weeks ago, I guess, and um, the Polo Pony Classic. I have a couple of those too inside some of that Halloween stuff inside those boxes. I also have two large bags sitting over here because my mom was kind enough to go to Tractor Supply one day uh, when I couldn't get there and found a whole lot of the Briar Tractor Supply stuff. Now I know we've all seen pictures of that and what's out so I'm not going to take a lot of time with that but I did want to go ahead and show you what they look like. I'm not going to open the sets or any of that. I just figured I'd show them to you right quick. So let's start with those and then I will get, oh hello Khaleesi. Okay. <laughs> let's start with the tractor supply stuff since most of us have seen that and then we'll move on to opening boxes and I know there's some blind bags in here so that'll be fun. All right, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but my mom is pretty awesome. Uh, she texted me one day, I was at work. She had gone to a tractor supply just to go and found all of these horses. And my text in the middle of the day was just a picture of the tractor supply shelves with her questioning what I wanted of it. So my tractor supply, the one that mom went to, it didn't have everything. So mom went and got me Merle here. That's that lovely um, Dundee mold in a pretty grula. He looks really nice. She also found the FFA Flash, which is pretty cool. i got to say, I love that Briar is doing so much with FFA. Um, <clears throat> I was a 4-H kid, so it's really cool to see them working together uh, with, a, with a group that does so much good. Uh, Speaking of FFA, I also got the Stablemate set. They also had the giant Stablemate set here, which is really cool. I love that we're getting another color of this mold here and the little baby as a horse, finally. I think it's been a little while since we've seen that. And of course, the Indian Pony miniature is super cool and is one of the main reasons I wanted the set. So I'm excited there. I also got, I think, a full set of the unicorn and horse full surprise models. Um, like I said, I'm not going to open these up. I know there are places on the internet where people have already posted the babies. Um, and while I want to open mine right now, I want to be able to get through all of the other stuff. So I'm just going to show these to you very quickly. There's the cool new fire heart in that one. Uh, this one has that uh, walking mare that's so cool. And I'm going to have to look at these a little closer. It does look like there might be some duplicates between this set and the other. Um, when I ultimately get to unboxing them from their big boxes, I'll try and get some pictures and show you if there are duplicates. They also had this one with the Croy and the Morgan. Let's see, and this is the Magnolia and the Walking Thoroughbred there in the back. Uh, this one has the Cobb and the Indian Pony. I think that's the Cobb. <clears throat> and this one has the uh, Standing Thoroughbred and the Pasifino. I think I'm nominally organized now, so we can go ahead and get started. I have four single horses in boxes. Uh, two of them look like this. Those should be the Premier Club horses. This is a Vintage Club horse. And then the little bitty one is, of course, the Stablemate horse. So I'm going to start with the Stablemate Club just because it's small. And hopefully a little easier to open than the big guys. So this is what the packaging looks like this year. It's pretty cool. And this one, I have no idea what these are, by the way. Um... 
I have a vague notion on the Vintage Club and the Premier Club, but when we're opening them, I don't really know anymore. Um, they got shipped to the house, I put them aside to do a video, and then I got busy and now I can't remember which one's which. I just know this is a Stablemate Club horse. It is from the packaging, the Tennessee Walker, which is pretty cool. And yes, that's exactly what that is. So there she is. I'll be interested to see this one and um, the miniature from Briarfest this year put next to each other because I know the colors are kind of similar. So that'll be kind of fun to see. So there is my Stablemate Club horse. I'm finding a nice place for her to sit back behind me. And let's go ahead to the Vintage Club because I actually know from the packaging what that is. Now this one is... <clears throat> It should be the music box unless somebody screwed up royally. It is. <laughs> okay. So I didn't join the Vintage Club this year. I was thinking about it and then I wasn't sure. And I went about 12 rounds until it sold out and then I didn't really have an option. Um, which, honestly, I'm fine with. I don't, um, I don't seem like I keep as many of the Vintage Club horses as I do of everything else. But when Mom and I were in... Um, Palm Beach for Palm Beach, yeah, for the uh, Ponies and Palm Trees event. They showed us this cool guy. They showed us one of the first ones and then they played his little song over the microphone, which was too funny to watch um, so that we could all hear that it did play. I think it's Home on the Range is what he's supposed to play. And I thought he was really cool in person, and I told mom that I was going to have to look for one from someone who did join. And luckily, a lovely person was selling hers and got it shipped directly from Briar to me. So I'm pretty excited about that. Here he is. And his the box is actually pretty neat this year. Um, and of course, the certificate and the card that goes with him which always has some amazing information and I believe that a lot of that is provided by my friend Andrea so <laughs> I love to see it and I love that she knows so much about the hobby and about vintage models it is a perfect uh, just a perfect situation <laughs> so here he is he's actually out of the box there he is look how pretty they did a really good job with the color, I think, on these guys. And yeah, there we go. His reins are still wrapped. He's got plastic here. But I love the kind of blue-ish teal that they got to go around him. And if I knew, there it is. And there's his switch there. Let's see. He's going to apparently continue playing. Um, I didn't wind it up but about a half a thing. So apparently it makes him play for quite a long time. Um, I'll point out that Khaleesi was on the other side of the room and I started playing this and she is very intrigued by what's making noise. So if we hear some bubble wrap moving, it's the cat jumping on it. Um, but anyway, that's him and that is his little music box song. I think they did a great job. I love that they brought back something as complex as a music box. Um, maybe in the next year or so they'll do a lamp or something with one of them or one of the night lights, which would be really cool. So, you know, get get to work on that maybe, Briar. <laughs> because, of course, they listen to me. Let's start with the Premier Clubs now. I know there's two of them here. Uh, this one is apparently Adonis who's not wanting to come out of the box. I'm really excited about this guy. I saw him in person at Briarfest. I think I posted some pictures or some video of it. And I think he's stunning. I am really looking forward to seeing him next to the 
um, Lip is on her. Marin Colt that they came out with ooh, however many years ago they came out with them. And then this one is uh, Kenseon, I think is how they'd be pronounced, but don't trust me. Uh, anyway, I've got both of them here. Um, this guy, I think, showed up like the day before Briarfest, and I obviously did not have time to get into it. Okay, so let's start with the Paso. Um, he is, I believe he's meant to be a fruit, he's meant to be a Paso Fino. Um, the first time I saw this mole, just the pictures that Briar gave us, I was really excited because I own a Peruvian Paso. His name is, well, he's got a Spanish name, but his name is Maverick. That's what we call him. Uh, he's my boy. I trained him from when I was a kid after we kind of rescued him from a bad situation. So he's getting up there in age. But back in his younger days, when he was, you know, a baby, <laughs> I really think that the shape of this horse, this mold's head, and kind of the stance and how, how blocky kind of is, I think it looks like my boy. So I'm going to potentially have to consider getting one of these guys custom in the future to look like Mavers. So here he is. I did get the glossy, of course. Of course, if you watch anything on here, you know I'm always going to go for the glossy. So here he is. And there he is. Look how pretty. He's so red. Like it's, I don't know if it's easier to tell on the screen or in person, but he's very red. He's very solid. He's got that, it's not a Roman nose, but it's close. And he looks beautiful. So I'm very excited about that one. Um, I think that, I think he's going to do very well, um, especially when Briar starts releasing other colors and, uh, other colorways. Maverick is a bay, so if Briar releases a nice bright red bay on that horse, I am beyond screwed. Uh, Khaleesi, we do not attack ponies. No. Okay. All right. Now let's open Adonis. This is the big, rearing, lip is on her tight Appaloosa. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this guy in other colors, like a lot of other colors. Um, it'll, be, it'll be really interesting to see what happens when they put him in a traditional lip is on her color, when they get him either as a younger horse with kind of the grays or the bays, or if they um, just do a gorgeous, you know, full gray, white look to him, that would be really pretty. Nothing wrong with the Appaloosa, I'm just thinking for show-wise, that will be an easier um, breed choice to make than the many, many spotted Appaloosa. He does have a base. Um, I think I remember it not being anything special. Yeah, it's just round. It's clear, which is nice. I want to say I saw one, saw maybe Briarfest had a black base, or maybe I'm just making that up. But I really like the the clear bases. I think they are easier. And there he is. Look at that gorgeous boy. Look at that face. His paint job is really detailed, and he's obviously been or at least from what I would think he's obviously been base coated he's not chalky but I don't know that they're painting directly on plastic if they are they have an exceptionally clean batch of plastic so that's really cool so there he is I don't even know that I'm gonna be able to get him all in the frame standing up right I guess there all right so that's Adonis I'm going to take a minute now to clear some of these guys out before we start opening the blind bags and gambler's choice horses. I have space, so let's go ahead and open up the blind bags, the Halloween, the gambler's choice, that kind of thing. I have two large boxes. Um, they should each of, I've got three boxes in front of me, two large ones, one small one. The large ones should contain a polo pony two of the spooky stable mates and I think one of them is going to have slither in it and the small one is is this which I 
don't even know what to say about that box. Um, but it should just have two spooky stable mates in it. So I'm going to keep those separate. So that if they're broken, I know that they came in the crazy box. There's That one's got to be Slither because it's got the Halloween Briar box going on. And this is probably the Polo Pony. Oh, and there's another Stablemate surprise. I thought there was supposed to be another one. Didn't know where it would wind up. So there's a Stablemate Club Horse. And two spooky surprises. I'm going to set the spooky surprises aside and open up some of the stuff that we actually know what it is first, but I'm going to get everything out of the other large box while I'm at it. Um, it's again, paper two spooky surprises like they're supposed to be. All right. And then the other polo pony. I only ordered two of those. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to order any at all, to be really honest, because while I thought he was pretty... I really need to stop ordering classics, um, but they still had them when the Halloween stuff came out, so I went ahead and added one to the list. Okay, so I'm going to start with the couple here that we already know what they are or what they look like. Um, the first one I'll open is the other Stablemate Club Horse. I know we've seen pictures of this. Um, Briar's already announced those, but I don't know what it is because I can't remember. So. Here is the Stablemate Club box, and it'll ultimately open up. Oh, okay, this is the um, the warm blood, the cantering warm blood. This one I thought was really pretty. And it's, here you go, it looks like it's glossy and shiny, which is nice. Yes, love me a glossy pony. So there we go. That's the, this should be the most recent then, Stablemate Club horse. Which I think is really nice. I'm a sucker for Palomino Pinto, so Briar's getting me with that one. And now let's open the spooky box, which I think is really cool. I love that they're kind of doing these themed boxes now. And let's see what Slither looks like. Uh, this was the Halloween classic. If you guys remember, it's wrapped in paper, which is a little worrisome. Uh, I only say worrisome just because I don't think that Briar's Shipping Warehouse, sorry, lots of noise too, I, I'm a little concerned with shipping them in the paper just because I have seen how some of these packages come to me after leaving the Briar Warehouse, and I'm not sure that paper is sufficient to make sure they don't have to return things for breaks, but... Again, I'm not in charge, so <laughs> we'll just go with this. Okay, so this is Slither. This is their snake-based horse, and it depends on what light he's in. I've got some kind of purple on my side, but he's very green over there. Look, he's got a snake running down his back and his face, and then, of course, he's marked Slither on his belly. So this is really cute. I think they did a good job with it. I like that the scales aren't super crazy but you can see like the heads of the snakes in his neck and in his mane kind of has snaky zebra vibes which is kind of cool all right we are officially down to blind bags and uh gambler's choice so the two gambler's choice i have are the polo ponies they were this year's classic Gambler's Choice release, um, Briar started doing one of those pretty regularly for the last few years. There are three colors. There's an Appaloosa, there's a paint, and there's a Glossy Palomino. Um, the Glossy Palomino I thought looked a lot better in pictures once I saw them in hand, so I'm not <laughs> opposed to it. The Appaloosa is nice, but I don't think it's my favorite. I really would like to get one of the paints. So, let's see what I've got. I went ahead and just popped the box open, but I haven't looked in. And that's an Appaloosa. That's a lot of spots. <laughs> okay, so this is an Appaloosa. But I'm, and I'm not going to leave you with that. I'm just going to open the base first. I've had a couple of the older of these, and I know that there's no good way to put them around without the base. So, there's the base. It's just kind of got a wood grain carved into it. 
just kind of neat that Briars left the wood grain. Um, they've made some updates to other molds and that. And removing that wood grain and just going with a smooth base seems like something that they would do. So it's nice that they haven't. All right, the Appaloosa is matte and doesn't want me to free his head from its bubble wrap prison. Uh, yeah, this, this isn't working as well as I thought it would. Okay, they they put a piece of tape like right at the ear level, so I was having issues. Okay, better, much better. All right, there he is. He's pretty nice in person. I gotta say this is probably my least favorite, but looking at him, the color is really pretty. I like some of these markings down on his legs that are kind of spotted. So he's really nice. I, I like I said, I wasn't thinking that this was one I wanted, but I'm not mad about it. I might be mad about this base though, I'm not gonna lie. Come on. Okay, it doesn't wanna go in the base. They have updated the base, just not about the wood grain. They put a little doodad in there, but I'll work with that when I'm not filming. Anyway, there's that one. All right, and I don't know what's in this one. We're hoping for now, not an Appaloosa. So, yeah, I can't tell. There's the base, which is the exact same thing. And that looks like an Appaloosa. I don't know, there's spots. We're gonna see. We're gonna open it a little better. So, you kind of see here. It looks darker, maybe it's, oh, it is the paint. Okay, good, good, good. That is a different one. That is a pleasant thing, is not to have duplicates. All right, and I think this guy's really cool. I know that, um, I think it was Leslie Kathman posted the models that they used as reference for these guys. And it was really cool to see. She does amazing work on um, horse colors and genetics and things like that. Her books are amazing, so check her out. And here is my pretty bay. I'm a sucker for bay, as you guys know. And then to see this weird splash pen pattern down the front, and you can kind of see on the belly. That is really cool. All right. So got the top one I wanted there, which is very exciting. And now it is time to open spooky stable mates. Now you guys know that I am a huge Halloween fan. And while I don't collect all of the Halloween horses just for, um, well, my own peace of mind, I do try to collect all of the Halloween stable mates because they don't take up as much space. And this year I went ahead and ordered six of them, one on my account, or a set on my account, mom's account, and the one that I keep for Aunt Linda. So I'm gonna open up this terrible box. It doesn't look like a box anymore. It just looks like a wrinkled mess. And there's paper on top of them, but nothing below them, and two spooky staples. This year, our spooky stable mates are really cool. They have the one based on the Edgar Allan Poe horse, the Nevermore, which I think is beautiful. There's the one that was based on Spirit. That's on, I think, the Django mold, if I'm remembering correctly. And then there's the Mule, <laughs> which is based off of the Bridie that they did as a micro run a few years ago. I desperately want the Mule. Um, I want them all, but the Mule is definitely my favorite. So I'm going to start with the two that were in the broken, horrible box and hope that they're not broken and that they're at least different creatures. So here's the first one. Ah, yay, I got that mule. Okay, that is the last time I will squeal, I promise. Here he is. Look how cute. Look at his little teeth and his little nose. I don't know, it's hard to see. It's not wanting to focus right there. We go. So you can look, his little feet are different colors. Okay. I'm very excited because this is the one I wanted. I'm happy now. I guess I can just close up. But I did promise I'd open the other five. So <laughs> let's open this one and see what it is. Um, now that I have the mule, I'm really just hoping for one each of the other two. Um, I would really like to not have six of the mules. Although I suppose if that's what it winds up, at least I really got the one I wanted. <laughs> So let's open this one, and it is, oh, it's different. It is 
this is the Nevermore one. There we go. Look how cool that is. Look at the lace and the birds. I think that's really neat. I was an English major when I was in college. Sorry, we have cat help right now. I was an English major in college and had to do a lot of different readings, but I love Edgar Allan Poe and that, that little stable mate makes me happy. So now I have the four that were in the boxes with the others, so I'm less concerned about breakage with them. It does look like these guys survived their ordeals. Um, so let's open this one. Now the only one we're looking for is the Django, and then we'll see if, well, we'll see which ones I got duplicates, because there will be duplicates. Okay, oh, this is a Nevermore. Okay, so that's the first duplicate, but that's all right. I ordered six, and there are only three of them. I knew I would get duplicates, so that's fine. Let's start here. And another Nevermore. Okay, that's just funny. All right, so there's number three of that one. I've got two more here. Let's just hope one of these is that Django. I'm going to start with this one. I promise I'm not like feeling the bags up before I get started. I'm just grabbing them and opening. And that is another Nevermore. Okay, I'm feeling really, really lucky that I got the mule at this point. So that's fun. That's four of those and one mule. So let's really hope, hope with me that this is the Django. Okay, and it is, it's blue. Okay, yay, I got one of each. I'm so excited. Okay, this one I think was based off of the spirit mold when they did, uh, the Halloween horse there. So, okay. That is everything that I have to open. I have a cat here inspecting my work. She's, she's being very helpful and very much not wanting me to hold her. So that's exciting. All right. Well, that's all I have to unbox for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to keep up with me a little closer, follow me on Instagram. I'll put that, um, I'll put my username down below. If you have questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments and make sure you are subscribed for more. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.